Number 5 on this list is the Loch Ness Monster. Nessie, as many people refer to this creature, is said to be a huge, long necked, almost dinosaur looking creature that lives in Scotland. This creature of the deep specifically resides in Loch Ness, a 37 kilometer loch located in the Scottish Highlands. The legend of this sea creature went worldwide back in 1933. A photo was released to the public showing a strange creature's head protruding from the water of Loch Ness. The world went into a frenzy after that photo got out and the legend of Nessie began. Ever since that point, many sightings have been reported, other pictures have been taken, and even sonar readings have indicated this creature swimming in the loch. All of that being said though, we've never had indisputable proof that Nessie's real. Well, I'm here to tell you that Nessie is real, but maybe not how you expect. New Zealand scientists have taken samples of the water in Loch Ness and have studied the DNA that they found in it. Professor Neil Gamel, a geneticist, is quoted saying, well, our data doesn't reveal their size, but the sheer quantity of the material that says we can't discount the possibility that there may be giant eels in Loch Ness. Therefore, we can't discount the possibility that what people see and believe is the Loch Ness Monster might be a giant eel. So, the Loch Ness Monster, as we understand it, might not be real, but potentially this loch is full of giant eels that resemble all the features that Nessie's reported as having. Maybe this is why we've had such a hard time proving this myth, because for years, people have been looking for the wrong thing. I really like the legend of the Loch Ness Monster and honestly want it to be true, but if it had to be giant eels, then I think I could accept that as well. Number 4 on this list is the USS Stein Monster. The USS Stein was a Knox class destroyer ship in the United States Navy. The ship was eventually decommissioned from the American Navy and was transferred to the Mexican Navy in the 90s. That wasn't before it was attacked by a massive sea monster though. In 1978, the USS Stein was attacked by an unknown entity which we now refer to as the USS Stein Monster. This monster was said to have been a giant, with some people estimating its size up to 150 feet in length. The ship was sailing in the Pacific Ocean when it was attacked. Technical difficulties with the ship started going wrong and eventually they brought it back into the port. Upon inspection, the sonar system was completely damaged. There were cuts and gashes over 8% of the ship with some of them being massively deep. They also found suction cups like those of a squid attached to the ship. After investigation of the suction cups and the gashes, it became clear that what they were attacked by isn't your standard animal. Even a giant squid would have had a hard time doing what the monster did to the ship. Ever since that point, the legend of the USS Stein monster has grown. Obviously, this monster has to be real because it has actually attacked a ship. Sadly, we don't know a whole lot about it though. In truth, we know less about what's on the ocean floor than we do about the surface of the moon. So it's very possible that a creature we aren't familiar with yet is dwelling down there. Number 3 on this list is Megalodon. Would this list really be complete if I didn't include the ancient king of the sea? Eleanor Imster writes, Scientists think that Megalodon looked like a stockier version of the great white shark, with strong, thick teeth built for grabbing prey and breaking bones. Regarded as one of the largest and most powerful predators who have ever lived, fossil remains of Megalodon suggest that this giant shark reached a length of about 60 feet. Their large jaws could exert a bite force up to 24,000 to 41,000 pounds. That is a massive, massive animal guys, multiple times bigger than the great white sharks we have today. This thing was so big that it would actually eat entire whales. Now many myths have surrounded Megalodon and its existence since scientists first brought this mammoth of the sea up. Estimates say that Megalodon went extinct roughly 2.6 million years ago, but some people don't buy into that theory. For quite a while now, the legend of a giant shark still living amongst the ocean has had a lot of people wondering if it's possible. If Megalodon was still alive, is it possible that we still wouldn't know about it? How could we miss a creature this giant? How many of them would there be left in the waters? There are surely a lot of questions that come up if you believe Megalodon is still a reality. If this creature was still alive, then people think the Marianas Trench is where it's located, a place so deep and uncharted that it's hard for us to know for sure what's down there. I'm personally not convinced this creature still roams the ocean, but comment down below your thoughts. Is Megalodon still alive? What do you think? Number two on this list is the Kraken. 
The Kraken is one of the largest sea monsters that is said to exist. It all started in Nordic folklore many hundreds of years ago when sailors told tale of a massive beast that preys upon the waters of Norway, Greenland, and Iceland. This fearsome beast was said to pull entire ships to their doom and eat every human on board. The first account of the legend was in 1180 by the King of Norway at the time. Since then, sightings of the creature and lore surrounding its capabilities have grown through the years. Fiction writers and movie makers have also latched onto this creature and included it in many stories. As cool as it would be though, to our current knowledge, the Kraken itself isn't real. However, something similar to it definitely is. The Giant Squid The Giant Squid is a massive squid that's said to be able to grow up to 13 meters in length. Sightings have even put this creature at 20 meters before, but those have never been proven. Even if 13 meters is the maximum length, that's still a large animal and something that would frighten anyone if you're seeing it for the first time. Many experts believe that the legend of the Kraken happened when Norwegian sailors stumbled upon this giant squid, and rather than name it a giant squid, they called it the Kraken. As time went on, the legend spiraled out of control until we got this massive sea monster which attacks boats. Now even though that might be a bit far from the truth, could I believe that there was one giant squid that was potentially bigger than the rest? Absolutely I could. I could also believe that this giant squid might have attacked a ship or two in its time and maybe even brought one down. If it did do all of that, then there really wouldn't be any difference between this squid and the Kraken. Either way, if you see a massive sea creature with tentacles coming after you, I just swim in the opposite direction. Number one on this list is the Hook Island Sea Monster. It was first spotted by Robert Le Sarek in 1964 off of Hook Island and after he saw the monster, he went on to describe it in detail. He said, it was only when we got to within 20 feet of the serpent that we could see its head clearly. The head was large, about 4 feet from top to bottom with jaws about 4 feet wide. The lower jaw was flat like that of a sandfish. The skin was smooth but rather dull, brownish black in color. The eyes seemed pale green, almost white. The skin looked more like that of a shark than an eel. There were no apparent scales nor did we see any parasites around. We supposed the flexible tail would have shaken any off. There were no fins or spines, nor were there any apparent breathing openings, although there must have been some. Perhaps we didn't see them because our attention was focused mainly on the creature's menacing mouth, the inside of which was whitish. The teeth appeared to be small. A fragment of some dark substance hung from the upper row of teeth, possibly a fish. As the monster was lying on the sandy bottom, we could not see the color of its belly. The creature was about 90 feet long. Behind the head, the body was about 2 feet 4 inches thick and remained that way for about 25 feet. Then it gradually tapered into a whip-like tail. The general color of the body was black with 1 foot wide brownish rings every 5 feet. The first starting just behind the head. The skin was smooth but dull. So that's his description and after he and his family saw it, he took some pictures of the creature to prove his claims. We have to remember that these pictures were taken in 1964 and doctoring them would have been far more difficult back then than it is today. I also tend to believe this claim more than most based on the level of detail he described the beast. Obviously it was a pretty jarring experience if he was able to describe the creature in that much detail. Since the claims, people have researched Hook Island for this monster, but with no luck. Hopefully one day we can spot this monster again and know for certain that it truly exists. Coming in at number 5 we have the striped surgeon fish. This fish is beautiful to look at, but beware to never cross paths with this creature. This species reaches about 38 centimeters in length and weighs only a little over a pound. Much of the body has black edged blue and yellow stripes and the top of its head is striped with yellow. These fish have sharp forward pointing spikes on its spine and are extremely poisonous and are often referred to as knives. Along with the scary nicknames this creature has, it actually gets its name Surgeon because of its sharp angular scalpel like tail and is sharp enough to easily cut you. These fish are very territorial with a large male defending a feeding territory and a haram of females. The adults may also school and they gather during spawning. The fish eats mostly crustaceans and algae. It's so aggressive that it might try and corner or bully members of its own species to get the best resources. Not only are they aggressive with their own species, but they display the same behavior to fish outside of their species. The surgeon fish is a fast swimmer that can swim up to 25 miles per hour and can live up to a whopping 20 years. These scary creatures dwell in the shallow parts of the ocean where they
the reef crests are located and often found in tropical oceans like the Indo-Pacific Ocean and Northern Great Barrier Reef. So if you're going to be swimming in the tropical oceans on vacation, be very careful of this creature. Don't be fooled by its beauty and stay far away because it will defend itself and its spawn at all costs and can infect you with its venom. Scientists believe that the world's seas hold around 1200 of these different venomous fish species and that they injure an estimated 50,000 people per year so beware and stay away from the striped surgeon fish. In at number 4 we have sea slugs. These are again a beautiful creature to look at but you will need to stay far away from them. Sea slugs have an enormous variation in body shape, colour and size. Most of them tend to be partially translucent and their often bright colours imply that these animals are under constant threat of predators. But the colour can serve as a warning to other animals of the sea slugs toxic stinging cells or offensive taste. Some sea slugs eat prey that contains poison or venom and instead of killing the prey, these slugs store the poison and release at predators for its own protection. Another disturbing fact about the sea slug is that they are cannibals. They are known to eat each other. They may eat a dead sea slug or attack a live one to eat it. Not only do they feed off their own, these creatures also eat plankton, algae and jellyfish. These animals also have both male and female sex organs and they can lay mass amounts of eggs, sometimes up to 1 million eggs and these deadly creatures can live up to 4 years. Sea hares, which is a common name for a large group of herbivores, sea slugs and the largest of the sea hares is the California black sea hare which are naturally toxic and they can eject a foul ink or secrete a vicious slime to deter predators. One type of sea slug in particular, the grey side guild sea slug has been linked to canine deaths and beachgoers are warned to keep their children and pets close by to avoid accidental ingestion or contact. There are so many types of sea slugs and most of them are extremely dangerous so if you see a pretty looking glob near the shore or while swimming, avoid it at all costs. In at number 3 we have the pufferfish. There are more than 120 different species of pufferfish worldwide and are mostly found in tropical and subtropical ocean waters. They can range in size from 1 inch long dwarf puffer to the freshwater giant puffer which can grow to more than 2 feet in length. These creatures are scaleless fish and usually have rough to spiky skin. All have 4 teeth that are fused together in a beak like form. Pufferfish tend to mostly feed on invertebrates and algae while larger puffers will even crack open and eat clams, mussels and shellfish with their hard beaks. Poisonous puffers are believed to synthesize their deadly toxin from the bacteria in the animals they eat. Due to their slow and clumsy swimming style makes puffers very vulnerable to predators. When they feel threatened or notice a predator they will use their highly elastic stomachs and the ability to quickly ingest huge amounts of water to turn themselves into a virtually inedible ball several times their normal size. Almost all pufferfish contain tetrodotoxin, a substance that makes them foul tasting and often lethal to fish. To humans these creatures are extremely toxic and deadly, they are up to 1200 times more poisonous than cyanide. There is enough toxin in one pufferfish to kill 20 adult humans and there is no known antidote. This toxin is secreted across their body making puffers dangerous to touch and even more dangerous to consume. Surprisingly the meat of some pufferfish is considered a delicacy called fuju in Japan. It is extremely expensive and can only be prepared by trained licensed chefs who know how to prepare it properly because one bad cut means almost certain death for a customer. Many such chefs occur annually because of poor preparation. In at number 2 we have kandiru. This this fish is something out of a nightmare. This creature has many scary nicknames such as the toothpick fish or vampire fish. These fish tend to be small only growing to about 7 inches but others can grow larger around 16 inches. Their heads are small with short sensory barbels around it, backward pointing spines on the gill covers and their bodies are translucent and make it difficult to spot these creatures. They tend to reside in the Amazon so if you're planning a trip beware of these creepy creatures if you're going for a quick dip. Not many humans have been attacked which is good but those that have, it's been deadly. This scary creature feeds on blood and has been found feeding on the urethras of swimmers. Once it penetrates its victims it can cause inflammation, hemorrhaging and even death. The earliest report of the Kandiru attacking a human was in 1829, then again in 1855 and local Araguay fishermen stated that it is dangerous to urinate in the water as the fish springs out of the water and penetrates into the urethra by ascending the length of the liquid column. The most recent attack of a Kandiru 
lure to a human was in 1997 in Brazil. 23 year old man was urinating while thigh deep in the water when he claimed the creature jumped from the water into his urethra. The victim underwent a two hour surgery to remove the fish from its body. Many speculate that these fish are attracted by the odour of the urine in the water, and that's what makes them attack, but others think these creatures hunt by sight and have no attraction to the urine at all. I think this creature might be the most terrifying of all sea creatures because instead of just stinging or biting you, this creature actually inserts himself inside the human body and wreaks havoc. And finally, in number one, we have Du Bois sea snake slash beaked sea snake. There are more than 50 species of sea snakes, but the deadliest are the Du Bois sea snake and the beaked sea snake. These venomous snakes reside in many regions of Australia, Papua New Guinea, New Caledonia, and are common throughout the Indo-Pacific. They live in coral reef flats, sandy and silty sediments which contain seaweed, invertebrates, and coral or sponges that can serve as shelter to them. These snakes feed on moray eels and various fish that live on the seafloor, up to three and a half feet in size. Their venom affects its prey's ability to contract the muscles and makes the prey flaccid to make it easier for the snakes to eat. The Du Bois sea snake is the most venomous sea snakes and one of the top three in the world. These snakes use their fangs to bite and release their venom to immobilize their prey for their own protection. The toxins in these snakes' venom affects the nervous system and it causes paralyzation of the body's muscles, then causes death due to respiratory failure. The beaked sea snake is responsible for more than 50% of all sea snake bites and each each bite contains anywhere from 7.9 to 9 milligrams of venom. A human can die from just 1.5 milligrams. Scientists have estimated that their venom is four to eight times more lethal than that of a cobra. So, along with the Du Bois snake, this venomous creature is among the most dangerous and venomous snake in the world. Not only do you have to be worried about venomous snakes on land, but some of the deadliest are in our oceans. So, be careful when swimming in warm climates and be sure to not come in contact with these scary creatures. Number five. Green fish. Hugh Jackman, if you're watching this and you like scary stuff, this first one's for you, my dude. In 2021, there were more than 200 new species of just freshwater fish discovered alone. Just freshwater. Hopefully, in Cistrus wolverine. Okay, that's a pretty badass name. And a badass looking fish. There is no way in hell I'm taking that thing off of a hook with my hands. Are you kidding me? And you wouldn't want to either, because these fishes have strong lateral curved spikes called undauntus tucked underneath their gills, which at any time they can extend and jab at their prey with these spiky prong like claws, hence the name. For those of you who don't know Wolverine, he's an X-Men with claws. It kind of goes hand in hand here, you know? The wolverine fish is actually a catfish, however, that grows up to only about six or seven inches long. They get their name from both the barbed razor sharp prongs associated with them and the temper and aggression inside of them. Yeah, so like full blown wolverine style anger. Luckily for us, they live in between rocks found so far in the Brazilian river of Rio Zingu in the lower Amazon that I don't think you're gonna swim into any one of these soon. I feel like that's where the scariest fish are, the Amazon. Also, kind of confusing biologists, so many species and names alike, but not alike. Catfish, wolf fish, half wolf, half man, X-Men fish. Like every day there's a new fish. Wolverine fish are only herbivores and graze on algae and detritus tucked away deep under rocks. So the likelihood of you just like stepping on one of these are pretty low. Might scare you away from their home, but they won't eat you. Just don't go flipping over any rocks and reaching underneath murky water in the Amazon. That's all I can say for this one. Number four, alien fish? Well, one magnificent alien fish, Advena magnifica, which translates to magnificent alien, hence the name. No, no, it's not from outer space or anything, don't panic. Technically, it's not even a fish. This sea sponge literally gets its name because it just looks like E.T. Hey, I didn't name it, they did. To be fair, it does look like E.T. the alien, come on. The long neck, the huge head, the big eyes, it's literally perfect. This year, a new sea sponge was discovered officially. Well, plucked back in 2017, but they're sure now that it's a completely new species. Over 6,000 feet deep in the Pacific Ocean, research team from the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History came upon a mesmerizing seascape. Dr. Chris Ma of the team dubbed the scene, quote, a forest of the weird. The sea sponge rises up from the seafloor to look exactly onto the direction of the current, mouth open, hoping to swallow up some bacteria to eat. That's sick, just an alien sponge sticking their ET heads out, catching the breeze, hoping for some fast food. Doesn't sound like a bad gig. 
The two holes of the sponge that give it its signature ET eyes appearance are clearly visible on the outside of its head. These holes, technically oscules, serve as openings of which the sponge pumps water out of. The sponge is covered in even tinier pores where the water is drawn into the sponge along with tasty bacteria and other small prey. Just sucked in through small chambers and the water is pumped out through a bunch of canals. Christiana Castello Branco, the researcher who found this deep sea gray, explains the importance of this discovery by saying, quote, as all of these organisms are intricately connected, by documenting and describing marine biodiversity, we are building a better understanding of life and the impact of humans on Earth. Uh, yeah, 100% we're all connected. Let's give these little dudes some clean water. How about that, people, all right? No more Mountain Dew bottles just thrown into the lake. Pick it up. Number three, bulldog fish. Catfish, wolverine fish, now bulldog fish. When are we just gonna have a fish fish, you know? The bulldog fish, or the Zanactinus otix. That sounds like a Decepticon, doesn't it? Zanactinus otix? Roll out. Bots, Autobots, <laughs> never mind. This thing can truly teach a new dog some old tricks. Like 90 million years old tricks, because our newest discovery is actually a really, really old one. Extinct, extinct, thankfully. You wouldn't want to haul this thing up in your net. The Dino of the Week blog states that some of the longest bulldog fish ever may have once even measured up to six meters long. Uh, yeah, that's like a regular size shark. The bulldog fish fossils may be quite valuable as well. A fully intact, complete framed specimen sold for about 110,000 at Sotheby's auction house. Is this the reason fish and chips are so expensive nowadays? Like, what's going on here? This scary dude roamed the warm, shallow waters of the Western Interior Seaway that split America in two halves during the Upper Cretaceous period. Distinguished by their heavy, bony skull and armed to the tooth with teeth like a nightmare, last year, Andy Moore, a local fisherman, made a discovery while taking part in a fishing competition in Nebraska. When he brought his kayak over to free his line, he first thought that it was a skeleton of something that had recently died, so he just returned back to his tournament. He contacted the sheriff's department after the tournament, worried, and they got back to him saying it was his lucky day. Dude, imagine just reeling in a 90 million year old fish during a fishing tournament. Like, I hope he won. That's definitely first place, isn't it? Oh, Andy? Oh yeah, caught a 90 millioner, yeah. Number two, the barrel eye fish. Tubular eyes, bro. No, seriously, your tubular eyes actually are very rare and also significantly puzzling. Say hello to the barrel eye fish, or the Macropinna microstoma from the Opus thoproctus species, meaning backwards in Greek, to signify their uniquely designed flipped up eyes luminously inside, alive in their head, or backwards. Generally directed upwards and back to detect the silhouettes of both predator and prey, although they can move their eyes back to forward. And basically they have a sunroof above their head that they can look up from inside their own head. Hey, that's pretty tubular, bruh. They can be found deep in tropical waters in the twilight zone, between 600 and 800 meters down. There are fish that gaze upwards through their transparent heads with eyes like mesmerizing emerald orbs. These domes are huge spherical lenses that sit on a pair of long silvery eye tubes, hence its common name. The barrel eye fish has a green tint over their eyes, which even acts as kind of like a sunglasses to help them track down prey in any sort of lighting. There is literally nowhere to hide, even for a bioluminescent fish. Barrel eyes are one step ahead the entire time. After years of only seeing dead, net caught specimens, in 2021, Bruce Robinson with the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute in California and their high def cameras finally got a pretty good look at these dudes using remotely operated vehicles. Dude, these are apparently really rare. Side note, is this how fish are evolving? Like their heads are becoming see through all of a sudden? Cause this is terrifying. Like imagine a shark with a sunroof. Number one, the snapping shrimp. This little guy, the snapping shrimp, aka the pistol shrimp, aka muscle in the alpha die family. It sounds like a mafia family, doesn't it? Hey, I'm a pistol shrimp with the alpha die family, who's asking? This little thing, this little thing can literally create a sonic boom under the water, right before and as it's attacking you. That's not scary at all. It's so fast you literally don't even know what's happening due to the stun alone and how fast it is. You won't see it coming, you might hear it coming. This thing's sound is that big, it creates a sonic boom. We know nothing, Jon Snow. Like, they're apparently found in coral reefs and oyster reefs. These pistol shrimp hit their prey at over 100 kilometers per hour. In doing so, a large air bubble is created, and because of this Mike Tyson shrimp is so quick with the jab, 
the following pop is around 200 decibels. It has a punching hand and a claw hand, like a jab and a cross. The sound stuns their prey first and resembles sticks breaking or cracking of a knuckle under the water. But don't panic, not in any lakes or freshwater, they live in tropical seas. They're usually muddy green or orange in color, usually only about that big. Scientists found that actual light is produced when the bubble pops due to the high temperature and pressure under the water. They're the only ones so far that can do this. I mean, this is pretty sick and also pretty terrifying. The knowledge that fish are starting to learn how to flashbang other fish like they're clearing a room in Call of Duty. Dude, that's where I draw the line. I'm not going swimming anymore at all. Number five on this list is Sinkhole Sam. The legend of Sinkhole Sam originated many years ago in Kansas. Sinkhole Sam is said to live in Inman Lake, or as the locals call it, the sinkhole. It's believed to be a 15 foot long serpent like creature that is as round, and I quote, as an automobile tire. The people who claim that this serpent was 15 feet and round like an automobile tire are Albert Newfield and George Rager, two witnesses of the beast. These men are some of the many people who have stumbled upon this creature and have spoken out about it. Based on the reports, people believe that Sinkhole Sam is a type of prehistoric serpent that has managed to survive over the years. Now back before Kansas was even colonized, there were lakes and rivers all over the terrain making it a perfect spot for an animal like this to survive. As time went on, the area dried up and locals believe that Sinkhole Sam took up residence in Inman Lake. As the years have passed though, the sightings of Sam at Inman Lake have been fewer and farther between. However, the sightings of a similar creature at the Kingman State Lake have grown. This lake Lake isn't too far from Inman Lake either, only 50 miles. 50 miles is certainly a long distance to go, but maybe not for a massive serpent like Sam. Sinkhole Sam, in my opinion, is one of the most likely creatures to actually exist. Unlike other sea beasts that are very far from any living animals that we have in our world, Sinkhole Sam, from most accounts, is just a big snake. I think it's super possible that someone has spotted a massive snake over the years in that lake, and through word of mouth, the story has been exaggerated over the time to become the legend of Sinkhole Sam. Sam. Now if Sam is real then we should all be in the clear because even though a 15 foot serpent may be terrifying, there have been no reported attacks from Sinkhole Sam on humans since the legend began. Number 4 on this list is Leviathan Melville. This ancient beast is aptly named after the Leviathan due to its incredible size. This is a monstrous whale that grew from 45 feet to 60 feet in length. It has the largest teeth from any animal used to eat the world has ever seen, reaching a length of 1.18 feet. Their heads were 10 feet long and their jaws were absolutely massive. Similar to Megalodon, these creatures are long extinct and lived roughly 12 million years ago. Also similarly to Megalodon, they had the exact same diet as the massive shark, whales. That's right guys, this massive whale ate other smaller whales. Also because it was competing for the same food source as Megalodon, it's not unrealistic to think that those two creatures would have fought several times. And before I go any further about this beast, comment down below who you have in a fight, Megalodon or this leviathan of whales? I want to know who you guys got. Anyways, over the years we've seen many legends about massive whales that were extremely aggressive. Moby Dick is one of the most famous stories of all time and features a massive of whale. This creature, however, would have put Moby Dick to shame and potentially would have even had it for lunch. Also, after it was finished eating Moby Dick, it would have happily eaten Captain Ahab and completely demolished his whaling ship. A lot of other entries on this list have had some reported sightings and witnesses, but this one we have real fossils to prove its actual existence. I've personally always been a fan of whales. In fact, an orca whale is my favorite animal in the whole world, but making an orca whale 60 feet with massive teeth is what we have here. And and that might be a bit too much for me if I'm being honest. Number three on this list is Ninjin. Ninjin are very strange mythical creatures that have only come into the limelight very recently. The rumors and legends of these creatures have largely taken place in Japan. Japanese whale research boats that are sent to the Arctic waters have reported seeing these massive 20 to 30 meter long creatures that are completely white swimming through the ocean. Now when I first heard that I thought that these things might just be big whales, but their shape is unlike anything that we've ever seen before. These creatures are said to look almost human with witnesses saying that they saw massive legs and arms coming from the beast. They also have eyes and a mouth but not many other facial features from the reports. 
For just over the last decade, stories about Ninjin in the Antarctic waters have circulated throughout Japan. One of the most famous was when crew members on the deck of a ship saw what they thought was a submarine in the distance, but when they approached it, realized the creature was alive and watched as it dived quickly underwater. There are some photos that have surfaced on the internet, but nothing that can fully substantiate the claims of this creature's existence. It is also currently unknown if there's only one of these creatures or if there are several of them swimming around the seas. This beast, unlike some of the other creatures that we've talked about is not just a bigger version of an already existing animal. It isn't just a big snake or a big shark, it's a completely different entity entirely. This makes me think that it would be harder for somebody to confuse a big whale with a creature like this because a whale doesn't look anything like a ninja. Hopefully more sightings and evidence can come to light soon and we can get a definitive confirmation if this thing is real or not. Number two on this list is the Oklahoma octopus. This mythical octopus is said to inhabit some of the bigger lakes in Oklahoma like Lake Thunderbird, Ulaga Lake, and Lake Ten Killer. The sightings indicate that this is a very large aggressive octopus that we wouldn't want to mess with. Many deaths in these lakes have been linked to this octopus or octopi if there are multiple of them. What's very strange about this creature and what makes a lot of people skeptical is that typically octopi don't live in freshwater areas. They're capable of doing it for a short time but they never live there for extended periods. That being said there have still been multiple sightings and reports of this creature living in these lakes. It's said to be the size of a horse and has a reddish brownish skin tone to it. It eats what any other octopus would eat but has a tendency to kill humans in its area. The reasoning behind this is unknown though because it doesn't actually eat the humans but only drowns them. Potentially the octopus feels threatened by humans swimming in its water and is very territorial. There's no physical evidence proving the existence of this creature, but the rate of drownings in these three lakes that I mentioned earlier, they're far higher than anywhere else in the area. That statistic, along with the numerous sightings from fishermen and swimmers, have locals believing in the legend of the Oklahoma octopus. Number one on this list is Organism 46B. Organism 46B is believed to be a massive 33 foot long squid like creature that was said to have 14 different tentacles. This thing lived in Vostok Lake which is a subglacial lake located under two entire miles of ice. This creature has the ability to animate its legs after they've been amputated, it's capable of shape shifting, it's extremely intelligent and also extremely hostile and it has the ability to immobilize its prey with a toxin that it could spray up to 150 feet. We've only actually known about this creature for a few years. Although the Russians initially established an Antarctic base on top of Vostok Lake in 1957, they actually weren't aware that there was a lake beneath them until 1974 and then they weren't able to get to the lake until 2012. It was only after that that they discovered Organism 46B. After they drilled all the way through the ice and got to a point where they could send divers down there, they discovered this creature. Sadly, the discovery was a deadly one though. Dr. Anton Padalka, a researcher at the site, is quoted saying, he tread water wearing a blissful smile as the organism approached him. We watched helplessly as it used its arms to tear off its head, then popped its remains in its mouth. It was as if it had hypnotized him telepathically. This ability to completely lull its prey into a sense of is apparently what this creature's venomous spray is capable of doing to people. Padalka had some more interactions with this beast, but it didn't take long before the Russian government came into the mix and sent a specialized team into Vostok Lake to extract the organism. The fact that any of this news even made it to the public is pretty marvelous, considering the Russian government wanted to keep it under wraps as much as they could. Hopefully, there aren't any more of these dangerous beasts lurking in the subglacial waters waiting to strike. 